Hi, I'm Stumpy Nubs, and this is the Convertible Lathe Stand. We built this stand for our homemade workshop, which is full of tools and machines we made ourselves. You'll find downloadable plans for many of these projects on our website at stumpynubs.com. This project is a lathe stand that's designed in two parts. Build the main three foot wide section if you only have a small or medium lathe, or add the second two foot extension to convert it to a full size lathe stand. Thus the word convertible. Let me show you how we built it. I wanted this project to be strong and easy to assemble, so I decided to use pocket holes. It also gave me an opportunity to use one of my favorite new tools, the Craig Foreman. I don't know why, but this thing's just a lot of fun to use. Of course, you don't have to have a Foreman to build this project. You can use a smaller pocket hole jig or even skip the pocket holes altogether and use glue and brad nails. As you'll see, the way the stand is designed, the joinery itself doesn't support the weight of the lathe. So using butt joints without adding dados or rabbits really isn't an issue. Using pocket screws, though, does speed up the overall process. I don't even glue my pocket joints. The screws themselves are far stronger than the glue on the edge of a piece of plywood. And if I make a mistake or decide to change something later, it sure is nice to be able to disassemble a joint by removing the screws. I'm not saying that you should use pocket screws in every project, but I am using them more and more in my shop-related projects like this one. The keys to this stand's strength are the three columns. These are little more than plywood boxes with dividers built into them, but they're extremely strong. I did run into one problem while assembling them though. The narrow interiors, particularly on two of the three columns, make it difficult to fit my drill inside to drive the screws. I could have used a small screwdriver, but who wants to drive a screw manually like some kind of caveman? I was able to use a long extension to reach some of the screws, but the better solution would have been one of those right angle jigs. Of course, mine was back at the other shop, so I had to resort to glue and nails for the narrowest assemblies. When I do use brad nails, I use a combination square to locate the spot to drive them. This keeps me from missing the edge of the plywood beneath. I hate when that happens. You may not have noticed that the center of the three columns is shallower than the other two. This is done to allow room for your feet when you're standing close to the lathe. Good thinking, eh? The pocket screws really started to pay off when I began assembling the frames for the top two sections of the stand. By boring pocket holes all the way around the inside perimeter, I have a way to easily attach the top panels without the screws showing. The columns are attached to the underside of the top assembly using screws as well. This means the weight of the lathe is transferred through the top and down the side panels of these columns, so none of the interior joinery is weight bearing. This means the stand will support a ton of weight. The addition of a center panel also helps oppose racking forces, so you're covered in all directions. This is the main section, and if you have a small lathe, you may just add your drawers and be done with it. But like I said, this converts into a full-size lathe stand with the addition of an extension. The extension section only has one column to support it. This is done to allow more room for storage underneath. You may think that this is a weak point in the overall design, but lathes are designed so that all of their weight is transferred to the legs on the ends. So the connecting point between the two halves of the stand never has to support any real weight. There are three drawers for storage and they're just simple plywood boxes. I like to use ball bearing drawer slides, even on shop furniture like this. They may cost more, but they sure work nicely. I mounted the drawer boxes so that the setback from the front of the cabinet was three quarters of an inch. This allows me room to mount some drawer fronts. I like to make my drawers this way because it's really easy to align the faces. I use double sided tape to temporarily attach them and washers to get the spacing right. Then I drive screws from the inside of the box to secure the faces permanently. I always use tape as temporary drawer pulls. It sure beats using a screwdriver to open them if they're closed accidentally before the permanent poles are mounted. And here's the finished project. There's room for a shop vac underneath, lots of compartments for storing turning stock. That center panel will be a great place to mount a rack for your turning tools, which I have a feeling we'll do in a future issue of Stuff Nubs Woodworking Journal. There are drawers for storage and a good strong top for your small, medium, or full length lathe. 
So grab yourself a set of plans and get building. And look for more great projects, tips, tutorials, and other woodworking goodness in the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, which you can read and subscribe to for free at StumpyNubs.com. We'll see you next time.